whenever I'd go to rehab, I'd be like, gotta go to big girl sip boy camp. But um, so I uh, so this there's this guy, and I like immediately was like obsessed with him, and I was like, I love this guy, and he had a um, he I thought he was so cool because uh, he had a T Rex claw and a Picasso. He had a what? A T Rex claw and a Picasso. A Picasso part, I understand. A Picasso painting. And he also bought a T Rex claw. Like a fossil. Yes. It's a cool thing to have. He didn't have it with him, but he had it. And he had told me one time he took a monkey home from the Playboy Mansion, and he was like walking the monkey down the streets in Santa Monica, and he's all fucked up. He's like, you don't understand how hard it is to do drugs when you have a fucking monkey in your house. They are destroying everything. He's like, the monkey was ripping pages out of like his books, and he said the monkey would go up to light bulbs and just go like this and shatter them, <laughs> like throwing pots. At- he's like, never take a monkey home. <laughs> They're annoying. <laughs> My advice is. But I remember being like, I love this guy. He's perfect. And I had like the biggest crush on him. And he was like my rehab boyfriend. And so I guess this guy and someone else, their dealer, because we're allowed to have our cell phones at this rehab because it's like- You are allowed? Yeah, because it's an executive one. Because they think we are like, because like a lot of like kind of like celebrities and executives go to this one. And they're so, like, yeah, I can't take off work. I'll go to rehab. Yeah. But I and t-shirt. I was like, I have to repair, prepare for my open mics. And, um, and so uh, <clears throat> we had our phones and this guy, uh, one of the guys are- uh, his dealer wouldn't stop calling him. His dealer was this guy named Baby Dog or something. who's was also a rapper, and uh, he was like, "You like since you haven't been like buying drugs, like my kids can't go to sleep. Boy, I can't pay for my kids' camp. Like you're ruining my life." Like the dealer. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> yeah. So the dealer's like, then he, we're like, "All right, let's just get drugs." So yeah, you get the dealer, and he <laughs> throws a bunch of drugs over the hedge at the rehab and it's like ton of Xanax, ton of Coke, ton of whatever. And um Oh, this is bad news. And so then like everyone at the rehab is getting fucked up. Oh my god. And it's going on for days. Wow. And like what? It was wild. I remember we like we hooked up in the Would shower. You hide it? We just we'd just be like up there. People would be down there, and we'd just be like up at the big house, like on the patio, just like ripping lines. Uh, not worried like, at all about the wardens. <laughs> not really. What do you mean, people hooking up in the shower? Like me and this boy, we were like dating. He's like my rehab boyfriend. You'd fuck in rehab. We like yeah. We I don't call it that. And you, then I remember make so love? What at do you night call they have like check ins and. Um, I should call it like make problems for myself, but uh, that's stupid. And um, they would have check in, so they'd like check if you were in your room and then whatever. So then obviously I'd sneak out because he lived in a different house. So I'd sneak out and then go to his room, and then people would go check in. I remember I'd fall like in the side of the bed, and then they'd be like, "Chloe's missing again," but it was just like on this big property. But um, so. He ended up getting in trouble and like getting kicked out. And this was one of my favorite memories of it. So we're all in like the downstairs main common room area. And he is, this guy is getting in trouble and he's like really fucked up. And they're like, you have to go uh, like blah, blah, blah. He's like, Chloe, come sit next to me. Come sit next to me. And I was like, no. And he like gets up and he looks at me and he goes, beginning to lose interest. And then like passes back out. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> what a move. So he gets transferred to a, a different rehab in Malibu. I'm on probation. For the drugs. Yeah. For taking drugs into a rehab. Yeah. I mean, if I'm not your friend and, and it's like I'm trying to clean up, let's say I'm trying to clean up and I'm not part of your crew and all of a sudden it's like, wait, there's hella drugs here? Oh, give me some. I know. I'm not going to fucking get clean like I wanted. Yeah. And so he goes to his new one and then I'm like, devastated because like oh this is the love of my life he's gone yeah. and so he gets kicked out and then i'm on probation i have like a strike or something and then i'm i'm i got all my off-campus privileges taken away yeah. so i'm not allowed to like go to outdoor meetings the outside so they have a meeting where they take everyone from promises and they go to like an alumni meeting and i'm not allowed to go to it so but then i like make this whole scene like if you don't let me go, like, I need this for my recovery. Like, I'm really, really serious now about getting better. Like, please, like, I just really need to be there. And they're like, okay, you can come. You're going to be have two sober companions watching you. We, You don't won't get your cell phone, but you can go. And I was you like. get your cell phone, but you can go. Okay. So I'm like, fine. Okay, thank you. Like, I just need this for myself. And so I go. Go outside to smoke a cigarette. When I look, 
see no one's watching i run and we're in they take us into like la proper and i just run from the people and i have no phone no wallet anything i go into i run i go to ralph's and like they sell liquor there you know yeah the, and i yeah. steal a bottle of vodka uh-huh. and then i like go to some skate park i like drink the whole thing I show up back at the meeting and it's like 150 people and i go into the meeting and i start yelling and i'm like fuck everyone here you don't even know what it's like to to be trying to get sober i have one day and they stole, my boyfriend's gone i make this like whole fucking scene i'm out of my mind shit face they call an ambulance they had to take me to wow they had to take i go to the hospital at uh ucla and so i'm at the hospital whatever i have to enjoy it so i'm there the next morning i wake up it's like 7 a.m <clears throat> it's like a thursday i'm in my like hospital gown i was like so chic at the time i had like just makeup down my face i'm like a choker and like i just had like a plastic bag of just like a pack of cigarettes and i was like uh and like a pair of like jorts and like a crop top and i'm like i'm fucking wearing this gown it's so chic and i was like had like dirty vans on and i was like i'm so la and so cool and I, when you leave the hospital, nobody at Promise is answering, and I have no money, no phone, nothing. And if you go across the street from the UCLA ER, there are the UCLA fraternity houses. Yeah, okay. It's like 7 a.m. in the morning. And I'm like, I, before I go there, I'm like, that'll be a final resort. Great place to find. Final final need. resort. So I try to like go to a few, I see a few restaurants, bars, nothing's open at 7 a.m. I'm trying to like break in through back doors because I'm like, I need a fucking drink. And uh, I can't figure anything out. And so I just walk up to one of the frat houses. And since I went to school in Texas, I know, like, you say, like, for the SAEs, it's like it's like their secret code is, like, you fly alpha or something. So I knock on the SAE house, and I'm like, fly alpha. And the guy opens the door, and he's like, okay, got to let her in. How old are you? Uh, I was, like, 27. Oh, what a fucking was, treat for a fucking too, frat. I was too old. a cute chick going up to a frat house and be like, I know the secret code, you have to let me in. And I'm also, like, wearing, like, a, like a hospital gown with jorts, and I'm, like, have makeup, and I was so hot at this point. Wow. That's probably my hottest. And um, <laughs> and I'm like, hi, because <laughs> my voice is like, sir, and I go in, and I'm like, and I, I, I he lets me in, I was like, I need a drink. And it's, like, 7.30 in the morning, and he's like, studying for like a test <clears throat> like on Adderall <clears throat> he's like you want some Adderall I was like no I just need something to drink and he's like we only have beers <clears throat> we had a huge party last night like jungle party was last night we used all the hard alcohol because there were like tons of hot girls and he's like I'm not saying you're not hot like I would totally like hook up with I mean I would totally give you a drink like I think you're hot like totally but like we just don't have any and I was like just give me a beer okay and he like gives me a beer and we're just like sitting there and I'm just like drinking beers with him on the couch He's like studying for his test, and then he what looks at me. What a great life hack to know if you have the secret code to a frat, you could just go get dr- drinks. Yeah, and the guy's like, he's like, he says to me, You're honor bound. And I was like, this is pretty lame. You don't have hard alcohol here. And then he looks at me at one point, and he was like, I won't judge you if you don't judge me. I was like, yeah, all good, dude. And so, so I got no way to, and so I have a few more, uh, I have a few more, you know, I like to call them BL smoothies, yeah. a few more smoothies, Bud Lights. And, uh, then um, the guy, I get the kid, he calls me an Uber back to Malibu. So I take an Uber and I go back to Malibu. And then they send me to another rehab. They get me on a plane. And they're I like, you're out. Yeah, because they're like, you can't stay here. Because you're fucking up everybody. Yeah, it was like my second how strike. Many, how many times? It happens all the time.